Hey yo! Hi, my name is Justin, aka Shanky from Shanky JRPGs, and I've got another video for you. Do you have fond memories of the 3DS? Do you remember all those hours you spent cooped up by your fireplace or on the couch playing the adorable little handheld? I know I sure do, and I can honestly say in my opinion that it had one of the best libraries for portable gaming. Unfortunately, now that the eShop has closed, 3DS games are increasing in rarity and shooting up in cost. There are so many games on the 3DS that are getting harder and harder to find. I say they need to be released from the 3DS graveyard so everyone has a chance to play them. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these kind of videos, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when my videos go live. It might seem like it doesn't do much, but it does help out the channel tremendously. Anyways, ice your drink, pop your corn, and let's get into talking about 10 JRPGs that deserve to be freed from the icy grips of the Nintendo 3DS. Stella Glow, released in 2015, it's a strategy RPG by, I'm going to mispronounce this for sure, Image Epoch, who also released Archives Fantasia and Time and Eternity. Oh dear. Anyways, I haven't played much of Stella Glow, but I did try out the demo way back when. And from what I remember, I really enjoyed the game. It's one of the reasons why I feel it needs a re-release. This game went under the radar and has a sort of cult following, so to speak. Every time I ask anyone what their favorite 3DS game is, I hear Stella Glow on numerous occasions. So it definitely has a fan base. It had an interesting orb system where you could slot orbs into your weapons to give added effects such as an elemental attack, or add a knockback effect, or simply just to increase stats. Stella Glow also incorporates a persona style system where you have a life mode to increase your bonds with your characters, and then a regular battle mode. It stands out from other strategy RPGs, which is why I feel it deserves to be released from the 3DS graveyard. Shin Megami Tensei 4, released in 2013, and its pseudo sequel Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, released in 2016. It's everyone's favorite monster capturing game, gotta catch em up. Wait a minute, that's not right. Anyways, back to Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei is a series that I am not completely familiar with. The only Shin Megami Tensei game I finished is 5, but other than that, my only experience with the Shin Megami Tensei series is Persona 3, 4, and 5, which I am aware they're just spin-offs, but I've always wanted to play more of the main Shin Megami Tensei series of games. I was always so surprised with how good Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Apocalypse looked on the 3DS. They looked incredibly gorgeous for a game on a handheld with such a low resolution. From what I understand, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse is sort of a pseudo sequel that starts off the same, but splits off on a different pathway partly through the story. It sounds like the perfect couple of games to be sold in a collection on the Switch. Atlas, are you listening? Are you listening, Atlas? Release Shin Megami Tensei 4 and its sequel Apocalypse from the 3DS Graveyard. Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology released in 2018, was an expanded remake of the 2011 DS release of the same name. The 3DS release had added features like voice acting, new scenes, true ending, and Nemesia, a new character. On top of that, Radiant Historia was co-developed by Atlas's Megami Tensei team and Tri-Ace's Radiata Stories team. This is another game I've only played a bit of, but never actually finished. I do remember the whole concept of the game being something amazingly unique. The game consists of progressing through multiple timelines and briefly returning to the past to alter something to correct a terrible occurrence. For example, there's one point where there's a split path. Originally you go down one path and as a result someone gets killed. So you return to the past and take the other path so that person lives, but in doing so, you create an alternate timeline. It's an incredibly interesting way to tell a story, and it has so many possibilities. This is one of the main reasons Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology deserves to be released from the 3DS graveyard. Monster Hunter Stories, released in 2018. 
So, I'm not the biggest fan of Monster Hunter. I've tried several of the main games, 3, Generations, World, and Rise, and I just can't get into them. The action RPGs that use the loot system to get stronger so you can take out stronger monsters so that you can loot those monsters to get even better weapons and repeat. It's really not my style. Not something I could ever get into. However, Monster Hunter Stories is a little bit different. Instead of hunting down monsters, you steal and hatch eggs. Then you use those monsters in turn-based combat. Yes, that's why I love it. Turn-based combat is my jam. And I'm always down for a turn-based RPG. Especially one that is part monster collection. Monster Hunter Stories already got an HD release. However, for some strange reason, it was only released on mobile. Capcom? You already have the assets, and you've already released the sequel on console, so what's stopping you? Give this game a Switch release and free it from the 3DS graveyard. Project Cross Zone released in 2013, and its sequel, Project Cross Zone 2, released in 2016. These games were sequels to the Japan-only release of Namco Cross Capcom on the PlayStation 2, and I can honestly say this has to be one of the most ambitious crossovers of all time. Project Cross Zone features many characters from a ton of franchises, such as Yuri Lowell from Tales of Vesperia, Cosmos from Xenosaga, Jin Kazama from Tekken, and Kiryu Kazuma from Yakuza. Despite the fact that Kiryu can't get a Tekken guest cameo with the excuse that Kiryu doesn't hit women, but in this game, he hits everyone with no discrimination. Good old equal rights Kiryu. This game is so fun. Even if the combat scenarios can get incredibly long and go on and on for almost no reason whatsoever. It plays out like a strategy RPG when positioning, but when you attack, it begins to play almost like a fighting game where you juggle your opponent to get in as much damage as possible. It's a very fun battle system and it's never gotten a release outside of the 3DS. I'm sure it'll be a licensing nightmare, but if it's at all possible, I would love if Namco could get these released from the 3DS graveyard. Dragon Quest VII Fragments of the Forgotten Past, released in 2013, and Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King, released in 2017. These titles aren't exactly locked to the 3DS, but I feel the 3DS versions of these games are different enough to deserve re-releases. Dragon Quest VII was a complete remake and was streamlined, making it a much more enjoyable experience than the original release. Even if it did simplify many of the puzzles and made changes to the job system, it really depends who you talk to. Some people will absolutely love the remake, and some people will absolutely love the PS1 release. Dragon Quest VIII wasn't as much of a change, but it did have new story content, new playable characters, and a few other minor additions that make it different enough to warrant re-releasing the 3DS version. And on top of that, for some reason, the 3DS version of Dragon Quest VIII is incredibly expensive. Just taking a look at Amazon right now, it goes for over $200. That's insane. Anyways, more Dragon Quest is always a good thing. Dragon Quest VII has the best job system, and often Dragon Quest VIII is revered as one of the best games in the series. Square Enix, I dare you. Give me one reason why porting these games to consoles and releasing them from the 3DS graveyard is a bad idea. Bravely Default released in 2014, and Bravely Second released in 2016. You knew these games were going to be put on this list. I've been wanting re-releases of both of these titles for so many years. It would not be an exaggeration to say that these are some of the best games ever released on the 3DS. When these games were released, I heard that they had a job system that rivaled Final Fantasy V, so I had to pick them up. I have an undying adoration for job systems. I love the customization options and replayability that it provides. The Bravely series has to have one of the best renditions of job systems as far as I'm concerned. Possibly even better than Final Fantasy X 2. The Switch already has Bravely Default 2, so it goes without saying that the series should be completed on the Switch. Not to mention the soundtrack. 99% of the tracks are amazing and an absolute bop. Anyways, on top of that, if these games did well with a re-release, maybe we can get a Bravely 3rd that can finally finish off the story and more importantly, more ring a bell. Seriously, I dare you. Name a better supporting protagonist with a cooler theme than ring a bell. It's okay if you can't, because ring a bell is peak hero. Come on, Square Enix, release Bravely Default and Bravely to Second from the 3DS graveyard. 
The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, released in 2013. Yeah, yeah, I know the eternal argument. Zelda isn't a JRPG. I'm still adding it to this list regardless, because it's close enough to one. A Link Between Worlds was one of the last Zelda titles, if not the last Zelda title that kept the original formula of standard dungeons with puzzles and various items to solve those puzzles. Not to say Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are bad. In fact, I really enjoyed both of those Zelda games, but I personally prefer the old style. A Link Between Worlds was an amazing game and was especially nostalgic as it took place in the same world as Link to the Past, arguably the best Zelda game ever conceived. Link Between Worlds was the perfect mix between classic linear Zelda and open-ended, not to mention it had one of the best stories in a Zelda game. That's the exact reason why I believe Nintendo needs to free Link Between Worlds from the 3DS graveyard. The Fire Emblem series, consisting of Awakening, Echoes, and Fates, released from 2012 to 2017. Fire Emblem is nowadays one of the most popular strategy RPG series, and these games are finally where it took off in the West. Before Awakening, they were more or less unknown. We got Fire Emblem, which was Fire Emblem 7, and Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones, which were semi-popular, but the series started to die, and Awakening is credited with saving the series. Additionally, these games are ridiculously expensive these days, with Fire Emblem Fate Special Edition, the only version that includes the full story, pushing $250. Fire Emblem is the pinnacle of strategy RPGs, and with Three Houses and Engage doing exceedingly well, there is no reason why the 3DS games don't deserve re-releases or remasters. Don't even get me started on the music or characters. They have some of the best music and some of the best characters and character interactions I've ever experienced myself. Have you played Fire Emblem? Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Come on Nintendo, the world needs to experience these Fire Emblem titles. Free them from that 3DS graveyard. The Mario & Luigi series, consisting of the Mario & Luigi Superstar Story Remake, Bowser's Inside Story Remake, Dream Team, and Paper Jam, released throughout 2013 to 2018, and ultimately causing Alpha Dream, the developer, to go bankrupt. The Mario and Luigi games are those games you play when you want a fun, turn-based experience, but you also just want silliness. The Mario and Luigi games never take themselves seriously, and are just a fun RPG to relax with. Of all these games, I've only finished Superstar Saga, but they're like nothing else. The humor is great, the new characters are funny, and the combat is actually really good with its quick time events. With Super Mario RPG getting a remake, I would just love to have these games getting a remake as well, or even just a remaster. I just want a chance to enjoy these games on current hardware. Who wants to free them from the 3DS graveyard with me? So there we have it. 10 3DS games that deserve to be freed from the 3DS graveyard. What are your thoughts on the list, and have I missed anything? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy what you're seeing and hearing on the channel, help me out by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Furthermore, if you want to keep up with everything Shinky JRPGs, well, make sure you hit that notification bell. This has been Justin aka Shinky, and until next time, thanks for tuning in, and have a wonderful day.